So that's community work, working with farmers and fishermen, working with urban poor, working with laborers. And then when martial law was declared, everything that you say, everything that you do, you're somehow afraid na something will happen to you. So in, in a sense, I am a product of that particular history. On November 1, 1991, I met with Father B at the Jesuit residence. Uh, I suggested to him that the Ateneo de Manila consider putting up a school to train uh, people who would then serve in government or to train people already serving in government. And so when Father Ben Debres called for me in uh, September of 1993 uh, and asked me, well, are you still interested in that? school of government idea that you had. I said, hey, I said, of course. When I talked to Dr. Benson, I said, look, you know, uh, we have all kinds of business schools, MBAs, because we think it's important to train the people who take care of our money. We don't have a school to train people who handle power. And also because the local government code had just come into place and people were not reading it and were not taking it seriously, uh, we said that, one, we would, we would like to establish a school of government because we think that people who take care of power should have as much training or more than those who handle money. Uh, second, we would focus more on local government. Then we did some studies to see what's out there and who's offering what. And then from studies, we began to formulate uh, some programs, which we began to deliver in late 95. Beginning nice. We had to work doubly hard kasi marami nang nauna kung sabaga. Ano ngayon ang niche ng School of Government? Pero mahirap talaga kasi we had no money. Kasi you're just starting. And, and then that's when I began toying with the idea, why don't we just put together the School of Government, CCS, and CSP all together? So, when the Board of Trustees formalized in a decision, Dean Abad became formally appointed as Dean of the now academic unit called Athena School of Government. 
I don't think that there was anyone that was particularly focusing on local governments, that's number one. They were not also engaging the elective officials. In general, they trained the bureaucracy. So we felt that it made sense for us. It would be a, a particular niche for us. And that's why the shape of the school of government was actually delivered on site. One of the things that we realized with the problem of leadership training in the Philippines is that almost all the leadership training is American derived. We are at one end. We are, we are very focused on relationships. Uh, the Americans are very focused on the individual and getting things done. You, ha you have to be able to find a convergence. And to be able to find a convergence, you have to be discerning. Working with the Jesuits, it was really the education for justice, men and women for others. From the beginning, the Ateneo School of Government was conceived to be a leadership school. We engage the students to be better prepared to build communities and transform our nation uh, town by town, city by city, province by province. Trying to create really a very good leadership, yun ang ini-inspire ng Ateneo School of Government. We need to have a critical mass of leaders in all fields, but especially in the field of governance. And I think the Ateneo School of Government is number one in that field. In making that the fact I think the school needs to continue to be challenged in the challenge itself. Because uh, for me, the rule of thumb is when you reach a certain level, you always elevate the bar. and I'm showing you just one province, Dinagat Islands. We have data from 2000 to the present on all of our provinces. So any of you would like to see this data? Kung handa na ba yung mga ganyang klase ng local government, local jurisdiction, sa federalism, kung yung existing rules pa nga lang natin, hindi pa nila nabatutupad.
everyone, please be advised that the webinar will start in a few minutes.
Hi everyone, good afternoon. On behalf of the Atenea de Manila University School of Government and Project Participate, we welcome you to the first leg of Halalan 2.0, holding free, fair, and safe elections in the new normal. Before we start, please be reminded of a few etiquettes to observe during the event. To help keep background noise to a minimum, please make sure you mute your microphone and turn off your video cameras during the presentation and when you are not speaking. If you have any questions, we will be having an open forum after the presentation. Please use the raise your hand button and wait for your turn to be called to ask your query. Upon acknowledgement, begin by introducing your name and organization before asking. For others who are not comfortable asking their questions publicly, you may send a direct private message to the organizers, Mr. Dexter Young and or Mr. Jazz Malonda, and they will be the one to raise the question to the speakers. Lastly, feel free to use the chat box to share your thoughts or opinions on the matter being discussed. Please be advised to observe courtesy and respect in the conversation. Bullying of any kind is not allowed, and disrespectful comments will not be tolerated. Any violation of the first warning will merit an automatic eviction from the webinar. Self-promotion, spam, and irrelevant links are also not allowed. As we begin our webinar, we are proud to introduce our guest host and moderator for our session today. She has a master's degree in public administration, major in public policy from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. A political journalist with a decade's worth of experience, she has covered the past three elections and serves as both news and Senate correspondent for CNN Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Ms. Joyce Ilas. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Joyce Ilas, and to all our guests and audience from the Philippines and abroad, and on behalf of the Ateneo School of Government, we welcome you to the first leg of Halalan 2.0, holding free, fair, and safe elections in the new normal. Now, this is the first in a series of webinars that will tackle how various countries have managed to conduct their elections amid the COVID-19 pandemic. For countries like the Philippines that are preparing for the national elections in 2022, it will be critical to start preparations in earnest in order to protect democratic processes. Now, the Halalan 2.0 webinar series aims to gather insights from election experts and discuss international best practices of conducting elections amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Knowledge gathered from these webinar sessions together with research shall be used to produce a manual that will recommend measures and policies to ensure the conduct of safe 2022 Philippine elections. Now, we are still more than a year away from the elections, but just eight months from the filing of the certificates of candidacy and just a year away from the start of the campaign period. But I'm sure as early as now, many of you can already feel some aspiring candidates making their presence felt in any way they can, even if they deny it. So yes, the election season is upon us and we have got to start preparing. So to formally, to formally begin our webinar, may we call on the Deputy Chief of Party of a Project Participate, Ms. Lorraine Dorotan, to give us her opening remarks. Let us all give her a virtual round of applause. Thank you so Thank much, you. Joyce. And good afternoon to everyone. It is a great pleasure to see you all here today. On behalf of the Ateneo School of Government and Project Participate, I would like to welcome all of you to the first leg of our Halalan 2.0, holding free, fair, and safe elections in the new normal webinar series. This event is the first of the series to gather insights from election experts and discuss international best practices of conducting elections under COVID-19. For this afternoon, our focus will be on elections under COVID-19, the Indonesia experience. Today, we are honored to have Dr. Hashim Ashari, Dr. Jayadi Hanan, and Ms. Tidi Angrani. They are here to share their experiences on how Indonesia was able to conduct its elections during the pandemic, the health and safety protocols that they adopted to mitigate health risks, 
and civil society's role in the electoral processes. With the Philippine national and local elections fast approaching, we are grateful to hold events like this to learn best practices, identify emerging issues and challenges, and collaborate with the elections related stakeholders. These initiatives are vital for us to have free, fair, and safe elections in 2022. That said, I am pleased to share with you that we will be kicking off Project Participate this February. Participate is a nonpartisan, nonprofit movement dedicated to engage and empower the political participation of the Filipino people. Led by the Ateneo School of Government, this consortium will be organizing events and webinars, publishing research articles, and launching information and education campaigns together with the De La Salle Institute of Governance, National Citizens Movement for Free Elections, Caucus of Development and Geo Networks, and Initiatives for Dialogue and Empowerment through Alternative Legal Services. These efforts are aimed to strengthen citizen oversight of electoral processes, enhance availability and accessibility of information to promote informed voting, and finally, to support electoral and political reforms and constituency building. As we enter the election season, we have a fresh opportunity to not only make history, but make an impact on our democratic institutions. It's time for us to work together and heed the call for a better future for our country. To word play with a prominent call to action of a 90s anime series, let's vote in. Again, thank you and welcome to Halalan 2.0 holding free, fair, and safe elections in the new normal. All right, thank you, Lorraine, for your message. Now, as we begin our session today, let us go over our program and a few reminders for our audience. First, the resource speaker will be given 20 minutes to deliver their presentation. Now, to reduce intervals in between presentations, the organizers may present the speaker's PowerPoint presentations during the webinar. Now, after the resource speakers, there will be a short discussion with invited reactors to be followed by an open forum with the participants. Now, for our audience, please direct your questions to the Q&A box, which is found at the bottom of your monitor. Now, please make sure that your questions are brief and straight to the point and address it to whoever you'd like to direct your question. Now, due to time considerations, the, uh, the organizers may select only a number of questions from the audience. We also encourage your audience watching via our live stream at the Ateneo School of Government Facebook page to leave their comments. Now, we invite, we invite everyone to post or tweet about our webinar today using hashtag Let's Vote In and the hashtag COVID Free Halalan Webinar Series. Again, that's hashtag Let's Vote In and the hashtag COVID Free Halalan Webinar Series. So without further ado, may I introduce our session speakers for today. First, our first speaker is a commissioner of the General Elections Commission of Indonesia, or KPU, for the Division of Legal and Electoral Processes, or process for the 2017 to 2022 period. Previously, he was also a commissioner of the KPU for Intertime Replacement from 2016 to 2017 and commissioner of the KPU for the province of Central Java from 2003 to 2008, which held the first direct presidential election in 2004. He was also a senior researcher and national consultant at the International Foundation for Electoral Systems, Jakarta, from 2011 to 2015. Technical Consultant on Elections and Electoral Reform at the Cluster Democratic Governance Partnership for Governance Reform in Indonesia, Jakarta, 2008-2011, and was the coordinator of the Kudus Independent Election Monitoring Committee for the 1999 general elections. Now, he pursued his doctoral degree in the field of sociology of politics at the University of, Mal of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and has a master's degree in the field of political sciences from Gajamada University, Yogyakarta. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our resource speaker, Dr. Hashim Ashari. Now, joining Dr. Ashari are two of our guest reactors from civil society organizations in Indonesia. 
Our first reactor is a senior lecturer of political science at the International Relations Department of Paramadina University in Jakarta, where he also serves as director of the university's Institute for Education Reform. Besides that, he is also the editor executive director of the Indonesian Survey Institute, a leading political research and polling institute in Indonesia and Asia. Before that, he was an executive director of Saiful Mujani Research and Consulting, also a leading political research institute and a prominent political consulting firm in Indonesia. He holds a PhD in political science from Ohio State University as well as master's degree from both Ohio University and Gajamada University in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are proud to welcome Dr. Jayadi Hanan. And our last guest reactor is the former executive director and currently an advisory board member of the Association for Elections and Democracy, or PERLUDEM an NGO engaged in the research and advocacy of elections and democracy in Indonesia. She was previously a member of the Election Supervisory Committee at the central level for the 1999 general election. From 2006 to 2008, she worked with the Rehabilitation and Reconstruction Body for ASENIAS, or BRR ASENIAS, in uh, managing legislative strengthening programs at the tsunami-affected areas throughout ASENIAS. She holds a Master's of Law from the Faculty of Law, University of Indonesia, Indonesia, majoring in Constitutional Law. In 2017, she was recognized as a Democracy Ambassador by the International IDEA for her work in promoting free, fair, and democratic elections. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Titi Angraini. Okay, now that we've introduced our speaker lineup today, let us now proceed to the presentation of our resource speaker, Dr. Ashari, to be followed by a discussion with our guest reactors, Dr. Hanan and Ms. Angraini. So again, let us welcome Dr. Hashim Ashari. Dr. Sherry, now. Hello. Yes, go ahead, sir. We can see you. We can see you. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's for the uh, of school of government in the country. In the I call this our president of the Chinese government. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to me and uh, our cafe in Indonesia. I invite you to um, knowledge sharing about the uh, election and the COVID 19 uh, with the Indonesia experience. Um, but first, I want to mention that. Uh, 2020 in Indonesia, we have uh, 2017 election. It uh, consists of uh, nine profits, 224 agency, and 37 uh, city. In the first, we will conduct the uh, Election day on, to, on uh, September 23, 2020. Uh, Next slide. Um, yes, ideally we will conduct the voting on September 23, 
20, but uh, by the, uh, what is it? Um, Dr. Asheri, excuse me, sir, but there seems to be a problem with your audio. We cannot, um, it's quite muffled. We can't understand, sir, what you were saying. Would it be possible to lower the echo of your mic, sir? Okay, I will time the And now you can hear. Sir, we can hear you, but it's quite muffled. There is an echo. This Uh, but now, yes, that's better, sir. Okay, okay, you may proceed, sir. Thank you very much. In, uh, in the second local election to, uh, to elect the local uh, head of government in Indonesia called Walikota and uh, Kibati. Then, um, because of the uh, COVID pandemic, we, we decided the schedule of uh, voting day from September 20, 23rd to December 9th. And uh, the firstly, the government uh, make, uh, what is it? Uh, Presidential equation to equation about the voting day, the voting day schedule from September to uh, December 2020. Capital degree number. 179 about postponing election status. And then uh, on March 20, 2020. And then uh, in the uh, capital dealing with the, the uh, uh, government of 179. And then, uh, the next uh, slide about the election management body, we have uh, two kind of uh, institution. The first is a permanent body, and then uh, ad hoc uh, body. We have uh, nine thousand and nine and 69 uh, person on the uh, election permanent body. And we have uh, 3 million and, 30, and 370,000 uh, person in the, uh, what is it? Uh, at the election management body. So totally we are uh, with the, Three million and thirty and three hundred thousand seventy nine and uh, sixty nine person. Next for the candidacy, we have two kind of uh, uh, source of candidacy. The first is from the political party. And then from the independent uh, candidate for the government election. Next, for next slide. For the government election, we have uh, in the nine region, we have uh, 25 uh, candidates from political party. Uh, for the region election, we have. 60 candidates from the independent party, independent uh, candidate, and then 
564 from the political party. For the mayor, we have uh, nine candidates uh, came from independent independent uh, candidates and 90, 92 from political party uh, candidates. Next, because of the uh, COVID reason, uh, KPU replacing the candidate because of the uh, candidate pathway. We have uh, four, four agency, four cases in uh, four agency. The first in the row agency, and then uh, East Almahera agency, Bondan City, and the Central Banga agency. Uh, the candidate pathway in the process of candidacy. And then next for the campaign activity, we have uh, KPU regulation number 13 in the article 77, uh, 57. We have uh, many methods for the uh, campaign. The first, uh, United Gathering, and the second, uh, dialogue and meeting, and then uh, public debate, um, and at speaker in print, electronic, social, or online media, and public dis dissemination of campaign material and other activities. Next, now, in this uh, election under COVID-19, uh, we make the change of the rule in the campaign activity. The first, uh, the campaign must help indoors, and the second, must priorities to, to conduct to, via social media or online media, whenever possible. And the third, in the event where the, the use of social online media is not possible, the event must only include the maximum amount of 50% and must strictly adhere to the health standard and safety protocol relevant with uh, COVID-19. Uh, so we change the procedure or protocol to uh, campaign activity in this uh, 2020 uh, election. Next, uh, on the slide, um, uh, com campaign monitoring report. We have uh, two twenty seven public debate and uh, one thousand and two hundred ninety three social media, uh, forty nine online, uh, thirteen thousand and nine hundred seventy four campaign with uh, health protocol, and uh, imagine gathering method for the campaign. Uh, 5,967 and uh, meeting forum or dialogues uh, about 6,171 uh, meeting. Uh, dissemination of uh, campaign material 467 and uh, installation of a campaign display on 38 report. Uh, and uh, for social media data update report for the campaign activity, there are uh, seven seven hundred and thirty eight uh, registered candidates and six six hundred and eighty six registered candidates who reported their social media and six thousand forty four hundred seventy two social media account registered by the candidate, 400, 427 social media account registered by the natural candidates, 6,045 social media account registered by Maya or candidate. candidates. Next. Next. Next, next, next slide. Next, next, 
next. 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 Uh, on slide number 25, social media accounts registered by candidate. Yes. Next. This is the, the data. Uh, social media account registered by the candidate for the uh, 2020. Uh, election. Next, about the uh, voter list, we have uh, 100 million and 359,152 voters. Registered in the uh, election and spread on the 298,939 polling uh, station. So we have uh, 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 near 30,000 uh, polling station which operate in the uh, 2020 regional. Next, transparency on the voter list. Uh, KPU arranges voter list using uh, information system called CDALE, System Information Center for the Voter List uh, uh, Information System, which is application voter list information system. And uh, information on the information of uh, voter list published on KPU website. Voters can report to the KPU on agency or, or city level if they are not registered in the CDLA or the data need uh, to be corrected. Next. And KPU uh, introduced a mobile KPU application for the voter uh, list information. Next, for the uh, issue on budget, budgeting, and logistic. For the local election in Indonesia, uh, funded by the local government, uh, by local government. And totally, there are uh, 10 billion, trillion, 10 trillion. Uh, rupiahs, but for the for the uh, health protocol on uh, COVID pandemic, uh, the budget uh, is sourced from the national uh, budget from the national government. It's about uh, three trillion rupiahs. So uh, for this uh, election on two thousand and the budget come from two resources. The first for the electoral uh, came from uh, uh, local government, and for the um, uh, COVID protocols, uh, the funded by the national uh, government. Next, on issue voting and counting. We introduce safe and healthy polling station for voter. Um, there are uh, a few policies for safe and healthy in the polling station. Next. Next. 
Yes, it's like in the normal situation for the local election, uh, for the local election, the footer in the uh, uh, polling station uh, maximum 800 footers, but for the um, COVID protocol, we just uh, arrange about 500 footers. And then uh, the health officer uh, and arrange the footer arrival in the, in the polling station and uh, use face mask, water bring its own stationary, polling station disinfectant, physical distancing, washing hand, body temperature check, and don't shake hands, a special, special good, hand glove, uh, face shield, and ink drop. This is uh, the new, the new uh, policies for uh, health protocol in the uh, election under the COVID uh, pandemic. And uh, and next next slide, we uh, present the protocol in the polling station. The preparation before voting process to prevent and control of COVID-19, official will spray disinfectant to the polling station with the following details. And next, opening direction from the head of uh, KPPS, KPPS or uh, polling station, you can report activities with health uh, protocols. The pronouncement of or, or promise of the KPPS of members, officer of uh, uh, polling station, and the public uh, of the official. Opening photo equipment, a description of the procedure of voting, and explaining regarding the health protocol that must be obeyed in the DPS or polling station area by the uh, polling station official. Witness and uh, DPS supervisor and footers, such as always use a mask that cover the nose to the chin when the wet in the DPS area. Always keep the distance, wash the hand before entering the DPS, do not make physical contact of any kind. DPS always use glove when on duty, polling station guard, and the, the first officer check the body temperature of KPPS witness polling station supervisor and footers before entering the TPS area. Head of KPS explained that if there are footers who have a body temperature of uh, 37.3 uh, Celsius or more, the footers are, are, they, are, are directed to use the footing rack and the special food that have, uh, that have been provided commonly by other people who are trusted by the footer or assisted by Footer who have uh, finished exercising the foot right are advised to immediately leave the DPS area and not crowd in the DPS uh, area. Next, putting process. Footer quickly outside the DPS by paying attention to safety distance about uh, one meter. Police station guard ask footer to wash their hand and wear mask. Polling station get check footer body temperament, temperature. And then, next slide. Footer must uh, fill in the attendance list that has been provided. Then the KPPS number five officer gave glove to the footers. Uh, footer submit from the notification uh, and uh, ID. ID card or letter of statement to KPPS number four. Putters wear glove and wear the button to, to be called on the ship that have been provided by maintaining the distance. That's the voting process. Next slide. Head of KPPS call the footers to take up the ballot, then footers check the condition of the ballot before heading to the 
footer exercise the footing rack footing with the footing tools provided by nails by punching one one time in the column containing the serial number, candidate photo, or name of the candidate pack. Put those put the ballot papers into the box according to the type of election needed by the KPKS number six. Next slide, the putting process number four. Put those open the flow, then throw the flow into the trash provided near the table of KPKS number seven, and then KPKS number seven with tripping with a drop tool into one of the footer's fingers who had exercised the uh, footing right. And then polling station got into the table of Notifies for the tools there then in the place uh, provided. Next. Do the reporter who have a body temperature of uh, 35.3 Celsius degrees or more. This shall be done with the following condition. The footer are directed to special food. The footer field in the remnants is provided by the KPPS. Footer received by the papers is possible from, from KPPS. Footers give their footing rate combined by other people who are trusted by the footer or assisted by a member of the KPPS or who fill up a statement from the assistant footer. Uh, footing is candidate at the footing wood, which still ensure that the uh, footing task place in accordance with statutory provision. And after footing, the are given to a mark in the form or ink in one of the footer's finger as uh, evident that the footer concerned have given their footing right and to give to and to give footer finger. Next, handling space specific cases. A footer arrives uh, without a mask. A footer who arrives without a mask or cover that covers the nose and shall be provided with one of the polling station card. A witness or, uh, or supervisor has uh, a temporary uh, order 37.3. They will not be allowed to enter the polling station to witness or super supervise. The voting process and shall be asked to find the person whose body time is below the maximum uh, threshold. Next, periodic disinfectant procedure. Disinfectant shall be spread onto areas and surface in the polling station when it uh, empty. And next, next slide. Impatient footer, use car in self warranty or uh, COVID 19 positive. In uh, our regulation, regulation, based on the data obtained by the Regional Apparatus Managing Health Affairs and or the COVID handling task force in the local region, those footer may put in polling station that is near to a hospital under the following. Provision. The Kimchi or city can be assisted by the PPK, the officer in the uh, district level or the chamatan level, and or the uh, uh, PPS, uh, the village uh, election officer, coordinates with the hospital and the COVID 19 handling task force to collect the data of this hotel when they prior to the election day. Second, in surprising this footer, the polling station shall consider the number of voting uh, footers and probability. And the third, I can see uh, our city capital shall provide the model uh, 8.5 from the this footer at the latest one day prior to the election. This uh, formula model used by the uh, footer who uh, to put in another uh, polling station. Next slide. Services procedure for impression footer. Those who are in the self-filing are uh, positive 
profit. Head of a KPPS may dispatch a team consisting of maximum two KPPS to uh, officer of uh, polling station members, who may be accompanied by a representative of the village's uh, uh, election uh, uh, supervisor, polling station supervisor, and or uh, part the witness to bring the equipment to this hotel in, in the hospital. The survey shall be conducted starting uh, at least uh, of uh, 12 p.m. local time and will be missed. And the TPPS members shall not turn the hotels to put using this method and receive the model. Uh, Formula model uh, A5 from the footer. The KPPS member will assist the footer to cast their vote. Uh, this way, this this way shall guarantee the secrecy of the votes uh, content. And in the case where there are no footers not included in the data on the footer list, the footer may may be allowed to cast their vote as long as they are to the Next slide. Provision in service in patient footer, which are in or uh, COVID 19 positive. So, case spot in polling station next to a hospital shall be conducted by coordinating with the hospital and the COVID 19 handling task force of the region. KMF to visit the hospitalized footer will follow by the protection group. Applying the full extent of health standard and safety protocol to prevent of spread, the spread of uh, COVID 19. The next activity food counting process in the polling station. Head of KPPS or uh, polling station official, assisted by KPPS number two, open the cell ballot box. Head of KPPS assisted by KPPS number two pulls out the submitted ballot and spirit them to the spirit stack. Head of KPPS assisted by KPPS number two announced and noted the number of uh, stacked ballot. Next slide. KPPS number one's number of ballot in the uh, ballot box with number of attendance in the model, uh, uh, formal model C attendance list. And KPPS number three and number four fills out for the data, for the right, visibility data, and ballot use. Next slide, food counting process. KPPS number two open the ballot paper one by one and convey it to the head of KPPS. Next, next slide, put still in the voting food counting process. Head of KPPS examining the points marked on the ballot paper and determining the validity of the ballot and showing them to the witness, police station supervisor, member of KPPS, observer, voter, or community present. Announce it in a clear, audible uh, voice. Next slide. KPPS number three and number four write, uh, uh, what is it? The, Putting expression into the formula of series uh, South Africa in accordance to the election result using tally every column uh, pick five footer after the KPPS had say tally or not tally. Uh, then, uh, next slide, put counting process, KPPS number five, call the announced ballot, tally or not. Take them spiritually. KPPS number six and number seven spirits and group and bands the spirit ballot using the wrapper being provided. One stack consists of uh, 25 ballots and announce the total amount of ballot photo received by each election consist consistent and total amount contestant and total amount of uh, invalid vote in the polling station. Put counting process number seven. Next slide. 
KPPS number three, number four, fill out the data of credit and value put into the preliminary size model, see result data. Data of KPPS, KPPS number, and the witness who are present all sign the preliminary size, see result form for every type of uh, election. Next slide. The head of KPPS, assisted by KPPS member, writes the original person putting and put on the official report using model series of data uh, in the in four size, and then a copy was signed by the head of KPPS and all KPPS member attending witness. Uh, Next step: recapitulation. In the Local election on 2020, KPU use uh, recapitulation information system or uh, we call CIRECA. The photo next, the photo image from say hasil KWK by, by smartphone, which has been installed uh, CIRECA application. And uh, next, uh, Next photo is the result of the uh, conversion. Next, next slide. The photo of image of uh, form J has a by smartphone with the result of Next slide. We have uh, two types of Sirica. The first Sirica mobile for the KPPS or uh, polling station official. And the second CDCAP web for the uh, uh, official in Kecamatan uh, District level and the uh, keeping in uh, agency or city level and provincial capital. This is the new innovation to implement electoral technology and transparency for. Uh, Voting pro uh, uh, counting process and the recapitulation process. Uh, Sirica was a tool to help uh, publish and tabulate result at the sub district agency, sub district uh, agency or city and the provincial uh, level. This slide uh, describes uh, the process how to use the Sirica. Next. Um, Result of uh, performance election. Next, next slide. We jump to next slide. Yes, this is the result uh, in the website. How the city cup uh, result for the performance uh, uh, election. Next, this is the result uh, for the region or mayor election. Okay, nice. Uh, okay, exit. In the head of uh, local election 2020, electoral organizers who have uh, accident, the first uh, 31 person sick uh, operation. And then uh, forty two percent six uh, invasion and forty percent pass away. This data update uh, until February uh, 15, 2021. In the district level or uh, sub district level, Kecamatan, there are 30 percent, and in the uh, villages uh, level, 34 percent, and the, in the uh, police station. To twenty seven percent, and uh, our uh, other uh, updating officer uh, eleven percent. Uh, it's rich uh, to have experience uh, eighteen hundred thirty years, uh, eleven percent, then thirty one and fifty. 
ten percent is more than fifty fifty one year or percent. And just for the uh, additional information that uh, our officer in the ad hoc uh, electoral management body, like in Kecamatan or sub district level, villages level, and polling um, uh, station officer, uh, they must. Under 50 years old, uh, because uh, if the recommendation of uh, health department and COVID task force. Next, um, the election organizer uh, confirmed COVID 19 for the commission level about 40% secretariat, uh, 336 percent under officer and secretariat for the uh, 7%. At the committee, thirty-six percent and uh, under the uh, twenty-six percent. The next uh, turn up, putting turn up. Put on turn up that every for the two thousand and twenty uh, simultaneous election is about seventy-seven point five percent. Next. Voters turn out in the present election uh, for the governor election about 69.67 percent and the region election 77.52 percent and the mayor election 98.04 percent. Total turn out in the 2020 election is about 76. Point and now uh, the last of the uh, electoral state is about dispute, uh, election dispute in uh, 2020 election who uh, held by constitutional part in Indonesia. The recapitulation for the government uh, for the Governor election is about seven cases, and the region level uh, one hundred and forty cases, and the mayor level uh, is about uh, thirty cases. So uh, now the recapitulation for the governor election is about seven cases. The region Okay, I will uh, stop now for the presentation and the full of uh, data. So, uh, now the recommendation for the open for the seminar election as the of participant uh, for the seminar. Thank you for the opportunity. And we hope uh, Indonesia experience for the presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ashari, uh, for your presentation. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, we will turn over the we will turn the floor over to Dr. Hanan to be followed by Ms. Angraini to share their perspectives as members of the academe and uh, civil society in conducting safe and healthy elections. So let us begin with Dr. Hanan. Sir? Dr. Hanan, you may begin your reaction, sir. Do Can we you... have a Dr. Hanan? If he's not ready yes, yet, I, I think... I am, I am here. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, your audio is a little... Uh, can, you, can you try again, sir? Yeah. Okay, that's clear. Yes, sir. May we hear from you now, sir? Yes. Okay. And my presentation, is it up now? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ilas, moderator. Thank you, Ateneo School of uh, Government for inviting me. I will try to be very brief. Um, my focus is on the role of, together with uh, Ms. Titi and Angraini, I guess, uh, on looking out the, the role of civil society organizations, academe and pollsters and other types of publics in uh, Indonesian uh, local elections of 2020. I think uh, my main highlight will be that one of the biggest role that was played by uh, the non-government uh, actors in this election is to put a strong pressure and demand uh, for two things. Number one is that the government, uh, the, the highest call of the, the strong pressure and this demand was that the government should, uh, at the beginning, should uh, postpone this election at least until 2021, until Indonesia know better, uh, until we know better about how to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic. That is the highest call. Otherwise, the public uh, put a strong demand and pressure that the government should provide all of the necessary and strict measures to make sure that the election is conducted not only freely and fairly, but also safely related to COVID-19 pandemic. I think, and I think in general, the, uh, that role was played very well by uh, Indonesian civil society organizations, academe, researchers, media, and so on and so forth. Um, let me start with this. Uh, to re-emphasize what Dr. Ashari has mentioned, that the local elections of 2020 in Indonesia involving 270 uh, election of heads of local executive, consisting of nine governors, 37 mayors, and 224 head of districts. And it involved more than 100 million voters. Uh, this uh, number is uh, more than half of Indonesian eligible voters in general. Uh, and actually, it was originally scheduled to be held on September 23rd, 2020. So because of, uh, because of the pandemic and the sheer number uh, and uh, the size of this election, then uh, 2020 election was a very controversial issue among the public. As I have mentioned before in the introduction, that public, particularly civil society organization, election activists, academic researchers, and, and so on and so forth, suggest, suggested that uh, uh, the government should, should postpone the event to at, at least 2021 until Indonesia understand better on how to cope with this pandemic. While others, particularly the government, uh, tried to stick with the plan. So the, controversies, the controversy was around that uh, issue. Here are the, uh, a lot of concerns among the public, but I would like to highlight the, I think, four main concerns of the public related to the plan of the government to conduct this election in 2020 during the pandemic. Number one is that the possibility of having very low level of participation or voter turnout. <clears throat> And uh, the reason is clear because voters were afraid of attending the polling stations because they are afraid of the possible COVID-19 infections. Number two, the concerns of the public is, was that the, the potential explosion of the so-called money politics in Indonesia, it is called money politics, which in this regard uh, uh, specifically means vote buying. So vote buying or money politics has been considered widespread enough in Indonesian elections uh, in, in, uh, during, the, uh, during these many years. But because of the economic hardship, that the possibility of, of uh, this, uh, phenomenon, uh, this phenomenon to be exploded was high because people are economically suffering. They want cash, they want money. They want uh, uh, assistance and so on and so forth, and it is uh, a possible. Uh, it is a very fertile ground for uh, for the the issue of money politics to be occurred even more. 
And number three, the, the main concern of the public was that the pandemic, as you, uh, uh, in, in this election, as has also, has also mentioned by Dr. Ashari, the elections involve 270 locals, nine, gov nine provinces, uh, 224 districts, and uh, 37 uh, municipalities. About 70% of the uh, of the incumbents in those areas were running again in this election. Because of the pandemic then, two things happened. Two things happened. Number one is that the, the, the limitations of people movement, people, uh, people cannot move around and that limited the, the movement of the candidates. Of the, uh, uh, during the uh, uh, during the campaign and or before the campaign uh, uh, of the election, but at the same time, the incumbent who is running the, the current government has the uh, the uh, even more possibility to reach out to the people because of the pandemic program, like uh, assisting providing the social assistance program, cash transfer program, and so on and so forth that pot uh, politically potential to create an uneven level of competition among the participants, uh, among the candidates in the elections. Those are the concern number three. And the, the biggest concern, of course, is the possibility of uh, the event to be the so-called super spreaders of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, then, how uh, what what then the civil society academe and others de, uh, do to to voice those concern at least uh, two things i could highlight number one is that together these activists uh, the civil society organizations academe and so on and so forth they try to along the way from from the very beginning all the way to the end of the the uh, the election they always brought up this issue of public concern to the public and to the government attention. Some of what they did was that number one is presented the relevant data to the government that uh, this doing this uh, election during this, during this pandemic was very risky. If if uh, if the government did not uh, take a necessary and stricter measure to. Uh, along with the, the plan to do the, the election. For instance, my organization, um, Indonesian Survey, Sur Survey Institute, in all, between July and August, conducted uh, surveys in many areas that conducted, uh, that, uh, uh, that were planning to conduct this election. And we found that between 15% to 46% of the voters were reluctant to turn out to go to the polling station because of being afraid of COVID-19 uh, uh, in, in infections. So uh, the, the data also shows that majority of the public were actually more concerned with economic hardship. Uh, they, they, so the political event like election was not their main concern at the time. And the public were also more concerned with the high severe, uh, severity of the, of the COVID-19 cases and therefore most of the public, majority of the public actually demanded that the, the election should be postponed. Here are some of the data that I have mentioned. Uh, you can see here um, uh, from August to October, what we found in, in, my, uh, in, uh, in LSI data that uh, the majority, more than 70% of the public uh, saw that COVID-19 problems is really, really severe. So it, need, it needed to be tackled first, uh, not the election. This is uh, the, the message. So there is a strong message from the public to the government uh, of the risk of doing the election during this pandemic. And also uh, public, uh, um, public, evaluated the economy very, very badly. Uh, in October 2020, for instance, 62% of the public uh, evaluated the, uh, that, uh, the, uh, the economy is in, 62% uh, uh, of the public, public said that 
um, economy is in a very bad condition. Only 8.2 percent of, of, of the public said that uh, the economy is good. So, Dr. Hanan, may we ask you to wrap up, please? Your time is up. Oh, okay. Let, let me let me wrap up. Yeah. So, yes, the second the the second one that the public did, uh, the academic and civil society organization did, was poisoning the public demand. And as a result, I, I think that the government did postpone the election, although only for three months, from September 23 <laughs> to December 2020. And but, but I think part of the result of the strong strong demand from the public is that the government indeed uh, tried to uh, to make every efforts to make sure that the, the election was uh, conducted uh, with uh, stricter measure on, on health issues, like what has been presented by Dr. Ashari. And as a result also, the voters turn up, the voters turn out was high, uh, but in terms of COVID-19 super spreader, is the, we are not sure whether or not it was actually uh, prevented uh, during this election because right after uh, the election of 9 of December 2020, starting from uh, December 20, the, the COVID-19 cases in Indonesia has been rising uh, very, very highly until uh, today. So those are my reaction to this uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. And um, may we move on to our next reactor, Ms. Andraini. Can you see my presentation, Ms. Joyce? Yes, we can. You may now proceed, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank um, Ateneo, Government of School, and also Project Participate Philippines for giving me the opportunity to uh, present my opinion on free, fair, and safe election amidst COVID-19 pandemic uh, and Indonesian experiences. My name is Siti Anggraini. I'm advisory board member of Yayasan Perludem, a, uh, a national-based NGO in Indonesia. Um, Many uh, uh, points uh, of my presentation already uh, de delivered by Mr. Hashim Ashari and also Dr. Hanan. So I will skip some of them, but I will start it my presentation with an overview, overview from, from uh, Indonesian regional heads and vice heads election in 2020. Uh, first, uh, that uh, the consequence of holding election during the COVID-19 pandemic situation, so all electoral processes, procedures, and mechanisms on electoral management and electoral justice must comply with health protocols. Therefore, the election organizers or EMBs or KPU in Indonesia or Comelec in Philippines urgently needs the support of a robust election legal framework. Um, and then election were very risky, complex, complicated, and expensive. That's the impact of conducting election uh, amidst uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Voters, candidates, and election organizers were in in, uh, encouraged to reduce direct interaction and preferably to use digital media and social media in their interaction. Um, but the more massive use of digital media and social media must also be followed by the anticipation of the spread of hoaxes and black campaigns. In addition, uh, not also to forget that campaign spending on social media must be uh, better regu uh, regulated. Uh, and then uh, voters have more limitation in interacting with candidates and have more difficulty in accessing information related to candidates' programs. Therefore, uh, EMBs uh, must provide many instruments and mediums for voters to access electoral information. Uh, the existence of many government programs in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic as mentioned earlier by Dr. Hanan, met incumbents has more electoral incentives 
then it's challenger. It's uh, from Indonesian experiences. And uh, last but not least, election observers and civil society organization have more limited space to participate and monitor elections. And um, the 2020 regional heads and vice heads election in Indonesia, or what we call it Pilkada 2020, um, the Pilkada 2020 was held amidst the high number of COVID cases in Indonesia. So it raised public aspiration to postpone the, uh, to postpone the Pilkada to mid-2021. With various consideration and arguments, then the government, House of Representatives or DPR at the national level, and Election Commission or KPU decided to continue holding Pilkada in December 2020 after uh, being delayed for three months. Because there's, there, was, uh, there were so many concerns about the safety on uh, elections, so I can say that the 2020 Pilkada is a credibility bet for the Joko, uh, Joko Widodo administration. So that the government tried its best to disseminate information on health protocols in the voting and counting process. That's why there were countless media commercials informing health protocols in the 2020 Pilkada. And uh, here are uh, some main characteristics of Pilkada 2020, uh, regional heads and vice heads election. First, polling day is a national holiday. So it's a national holiday in all provinces, in all over Indonesia. Polling station in Indonesia are set up very close to voters. The number of voters per polling place is relatively small, maximum 500 voters per polling station, but in average uh, around uh, 200 to 30, uh, uh, to, uh, 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 around uh, 200 and 300 voters per polling station. Uh, Indonesian voters, uh, from my experiences in uh, monitoring elections since 1999, are loyal voters and are very cooperative on the electoral agenda. The high voter turnout rate uh, proof this is this in every elections. Um, based on the condition outlined above, it is not too difficult to encourage voters to go to the polling station. And then uh, voters must cast, uh, must cast uh, their votes directly at the polling station on polling day, except for those who are sick. There is no early or advanced voting and postal voting mechanism. So in Indonesia, you can only cast your vote at the polling station. The number of campaign participants was limited to a maximum of five uh, of 50 people per meeting and must follow health protocol strictly. And last one, voting and counting were carried out man manually, not like in your country, you are using electronic counting machine. In Indonesia, all the process conducted manually. There's electronic vote tabulation technology, what we call it C-Recap, as uh, uh, explained by Mr. Uh, Ashari earlier, but only as an additional instrument for transparency of election result. So all the tabulation process conducted manually. Um, this is an illustration uh, of voting day announcement letter. So three days before uh, the voting day, uh, I was registered in one polling station in South Tangerang uh, in Banten province, uh, very close to Jakarta in the border with Jakarta. So three days before the voting day, I received a letter like this. In this letter, uh, uh, I have an uh, information uh, that the voting process will start it at 7 uh, a.m. until uh, 1 p.m. But my schedule, so voters divided into several schedule. I got my schedule that I must come, not really must, because although I exit this schedule, I still can cast my vote, but I, um, what is it, uh, suggested to come at 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. So this is my schedule. And also in the uh, voting day announcement letter, uh, there's a barcode that I can uh, capture and then uh, will, uh, what is it, guided me directly to uh, election commission um, website. Uh, I can, uh, uh, to inform you, where is, where, where is your uh, voting uh, uh, polling place location, 
your voting uh, time and so on and so on. So this is very helpful uh, because it uh, helps me to understand more about the voting day. And also, um, this is my voting, uh, my polling place uh, location, my booth, uh, voting uh, polling station location, and uh, polling station display. Um, you can see that this is a uh, sanitary in, um, equipment. Uh, before I enter the polling station, I must wash my hand here and then uh, disinfect, uh, use disinfectant, hand sanitizers. This is the hand sanitizer that must be used by the voters. Um, this is the voter list, so I can check whether my name on the list or not. But because I already received the letter from the voting officials, I know that my name uh, was on the list. This is me during the voting day. This is my ID. I must uh, bring my ID. Uh, I also receive a plastic glove, disposable glove from the voting officials. I must uh, bring my own ballpoint and my or my own pen so I can write down my name uh, using my own pen. Uh, I must uh, use my own mask from uh, home. Um, you can see that this is my outfit during the voting day. Miss um, Grainy, you have two minutes left. Okay. Uh, please okay. wrap up. Yes, okay. And this is the after I cast my vote, uh, when I put the ballots uh, into the ballot boxes, and uh, and then the voting official drip uh, the ink uh, onto my finger. Uh, this is the process. So this is um, uh, the health protocol that must be followed by uh, election organizers, uh, voters, and also um, all the people involved in the voting, uh, voting day. Um, as mentioned earlier by Mr. Hashim Ashari that uh, candidates uh, push to use um, uh, online campaign method, but based on the data from election supervisory body, candidate prefer to have a direct a campaign or face-to-face -face campaign. You can see the comparison. This is the direct campaign, face-to-face -face campaign, and this is uh, online campaign. Only a small uh, number of candidates using uh, online campaign during uh, the Pilkada 2020. And um, this is several things that need to be fixed as a lesson learned from Indonesian election. Despite the need for a robust legal framework for election, the government and House of Representatives decided not to change the election law for the 2020 Pilkada. So the adjustment of election procedures to conform uh, to health protocols depends entirely on the regulation made by the election commission or KPU. Of course, this cannot be maximized because not everything can be regulated by the KPU through its regulation. For example, related to the public aspiration for strict sanction provision for candidates who violate health protocols. And then uh, the election is not only about voting day, but from our uh, observation in the 2020 Pilkada, the concentration of all states stakeholders seem to be only focused on uh, compliance with health protocols on the voting day. The impact was that public supervision on the nomination and campaign process became weak. And also the long process of vote uh, tabulation should be shortened by using electronic vote tabulation. This is last uh, slide. Some concerns on Pilkada 2020, maybe, maybe Philippine uh, could learn from us. Uh, first, the candidate nomination processes by political parties need to be more inclusive and uh, public scrutiny needs to be strengthened. As mentioned by, by Dr. Hanan, because of the pandemic, the mobility uh, or, and the activity of election monitors is not too flexible compared to the normal situation. Uh, secondly, as a result in the 2020 Pilkada, because of the uh, not, uh, because of the weak uh, uh, so, uh, observation of the election monitors organization, regions with only one pair candidates contested in the election, or what we call it unopposed candidate, have, uh, have increased dramatically from 16 regions in uh, 2018 to 25 regions in 2020. 
all those uh, unopposed candidates won the election. It is an anomaly for Indonesian politics with its multi-party system and vast number of voters. And lastly, election amidst the COVID-19 pandemic are very risky and should uh, not be carried out carelessly because the stakes are the safety of human life. COVID-19 infected at least 70 candidates, 40 KPU commissioners, uh, and more than 100 KPU staff at all levels. Seven candidates died while the election stage took place, and four elected candidates died before uh, their inauguration. So that's all from me. The voice of civil society must be uh, what is it, uh, keep loud, so uh, the government and political party understand that we monitor the election. Thank you, uh, Ms. Joyce. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Angraini. So now we proceed to our panel discu discussion with our three speakers. Again, may we recognize again Dr. Ashari, Dr. Hanan, and uh, Ms. Angraini. So I will start with the questions, with my questions first, and then later on, we will be asking also the questions sent by our audience. First, I would like to ask um, some questions based on the presentation of Dr. Ashari. Uh, Dr. Ashari, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I am. Okay. Sir, you mentioned earlier, or as mentioned by Dr. Hanan and Ms. Angraini, there was strong opposition against holding a major event during a pandemic. Now, among those opposing were medical groups. But uh, considering that Indonesia has one of the highest number of COVID cases in uh, Asia. So, sir, what made you decide to push through with the elections amid the pandemic? Um, because uh, the question is, because on uh, February, it was uh, uh, into 170. Um, sir, I'm sorry, but your uh, audio is muffled again, sir. We can't quite hear you. Your answer. Okay. You hear me? Yes, sir. That's clear. Uh, the first recommendation, because of our, uh, February 2020, mm -hmm. uh, in the 2,170 uh, uh, um, areas, the head of uh, local government has uh, finished their visit uh, uh, period. So, if uh, we not to uh, make a decision when the when the voting uh, is, so. Uh, we will have, uh, what is it? Uh, there are no definitive uh, um, uh, head of local government. So uh, we must. Um, sorry, sir. Can you can you have your microphone near your near, sir? Because we can't quite hear you. Okay. Um, on February 2021, in 270 areas, there are uh, the famous uh, type of uh, uh, head of local government uh, period. So we must uh, uh, what is it? make a decision when the uh, voting days escape not on September 20, uh, 2020. And uh, we have a reason uh, on December 20, 2020. Before we have uh, three options, the first, uh, in the, I think, the hard, the, the hard option, uh, December 2020. And the second opinion on uh, March 2021, uh, and the third uh, option on September 2021. But uh, under uh, what is it? Uh, discussion with the government and House of Representatives, we um, 
the decision that uh, put in place on uh, December 2020. Mm -hmm. okay. Sir, um, were you satisfied with the uh, health uh, protocols in place? Do you think you were able to successfully implement the protocols that you had planned? Um, in the first uh, view by the uh, COVID task force, the, the government of the COVID task force, uh, the day after putting this, they said that, uh, what is it, um, about 96% 90, um, uh, uh, health protocol um, implemented in the election. But uh, in my view, in, uh, I will, or KPU will uh, uh, waiting for uh, 14, 14 days after voting day. So when the voting day on uh, December 9, we will um, waiting for 14 days at, until uh, December 23. Because mm -hmm. of spread of uh, COVID is about 14 days. And on the December 20, 23rd, we have no information about the spread of COVID uh, because of uh, uh, election. So what the Dr. Jayati question, um, we, we can answer that uh, the local election or election uh, not spread the uh, not cause spread of the uh, what is it COVID. Mm -hmm. Sir, um, you mentioned several protocols in the report. I read, uh, I saw a report which said that there were about there were about a thousand and five hundred violations committed, um, violations on the rules and health protocols. Sir, if violations were committed, were candidates whose campaign violated the health protocols? or whose team violated the protocols made accountable? Yes, uh, we, we have uh, uh, administrative sanction for the uh, what is it, prohibition of uh, uh, protocol, COVID pro protocol, like uh, to postpone the camp their campaign activity or uh, to So we limited the uh, competitivity. We, we, in our in our KPU regulation, we make uh, administrative sanction about uh, the prohibition uh, of uh, COVID protocol. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, sir. I would like to ask our reactors now, Dr. Hanan and uh, Ms. Angraini. Yeah. Dr. Hanan, you mentioned that the government made strong efforts to ensure the safety of people. Were you satisfied with the health protocols in place and how they were implemented? We conducted post-election uh, survey mm -hmm. on the my organization, my po my polling organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that 97 percent of the voters who attended the polling stations said that health protocol was observed, at least during their uh, attendance, like mm -hmm. wearing masks and then uh, uh, social distancing measure and also uh, washing hand. That's, but this is only on the election day, right? Uh, the problem is, uh, for instance, there was a lot of violations, including the one that you mentioned, was con was uh, uh, was conducted during, I mean, was committed during the campaign, uh, during the what is it, registration for candidates uh, uh, phase, and also during the campaign time. You know, uh, election in Indonesia has the provision that there is the so-called official campaign time. Yeah. Campaign times uh, was long enough, around three months or two months. Yeah, uh, during this campaign, 
it was very difficult to strictly uh, follow the COVID-19 measure, especially when, as Ms. Angraini mentioned, the candidates, the candidates of the election prefer doing open campaign, face-to-face -face campaign, coming to the public, and that they, they are not wrong because the public wanted that. The public only were only familiar with that kind of that types of time campaign. Okay, so uh, violations occur very, 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 uh, uh, very often during that uh, during that phase. But yes, during the election, because it is controlled directly by the uh, KPU, uh, Mister uh, uh, Doctor Ashari's institutions. So that, that 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 was good enough. But other other phase, it's not very well managed. Sir, I just ha have a follow up uh, question about that because one of, as mentioned by Dr. Ashari, um, one one difference in this year's um, campaigning is they want to they would have wanted to prioritize the conduct of campaigning on social media. Yeah. So was that successful, sir? Was 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 that implemented properly, or did you see that as a failure, sir? Uh, internet penetration in Indonesia mm -hmm. is an issue. Yes, it, it, in 2020, the, inter, it, the internet penetration is around, let's say, 55-60% on average. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, the areas that conducted the election, 270 areas, most of those areas are rural areas. So in rural areas, the uh, internet penetration, social media penetration was lower, maybe around 30-35%. That made the candidate think that it is not enough to campaign only through social media. So they still prefer going out there. Some candidates even, I think, caught by the, by the authorities doing kind of fast, uh, you know, using musical uh, like or, or uh, what is it? Um, uh, what is it? Gathering, mass gathering, sort of. Yeah, it it, it is. It was prohibited, but some still caught caught doing that because of uh, the limitation of the venue, the channels for campaigning. Mm -hmm. Okay, may may I ask now, uh, Miss Angraini? Yes. Yes. Then how about you? Were you satisfied with um, the uh, health uh, and safety protocols that were um, implemented? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Ms. Joyce, that election mm -hmm. is not only about the voting day. Mm -hmm. So on voting day, relatively, all the stakeholders follow the health protocols. Because mm -hmm. as I uh, explained earlier, that there were a massive campaign on health protocols for the voting day. But the violation occurred during the um, campaign process and also after the voting day when they celebrate uh, their winning in election. So they uh, started to uh, gather among the supporters with candidates uh, and so on and so on. Um, and government, because a government really wants to continue the elections, so Indonesian government tried hard to uh, prove to the public that that they will do their best in uh, support in supporting KPU to conduct the election. But um, uh, generally, I can say that the election runs smoothly. But uh, there's also many aspects that we need to improve. Uh, for uh, example, when uh, government and uh, House of Representatives. Uh, didn't want to change the election law. It's limit KPU in doing like uh, innovation and uh, regulates uh, progressive uh, provision to improve uh, the mm -hmm. uh, the election uh, uh, organ uh, in in or organ organizing the elections. But overall, I can say that the election runs smoothly and relatively. Uh, KPU doing their uh, good job in conducting mm -hmm. uh, conducting last uh, pilkada. Ah. Ms. Angraini, one of the concerns was the voter turnout. And as we saw in the numbers earlier, that the number was still relatively high, considering that we are in the middle of a pandemic. But it is lower as compared to the past uh, election years. So, Ma'am, did you feel that there was a voter disenfranchisement during these elections? Were some voters deprived of their... Uh, right 
uh, to join this democratic processes. And in so far as candidates are concerned, did you feel that some candidates or uh, some of those who aspired to run were um, were deprived of the chance to do so because of this pandemic? Uh, yeah, well, uh, some of the, the uh, voters, I mean, some of the activists uh, publicly, mm -hmm. uh, what is it, stated that they don't want to join the voting day because of the safety reason, the safety mm -hmm. reason. But as I mentioned in my presentation that the characteristic of Indonesian voters, they are so loyal and cooperative on electoral agenda. So that's why, for instance, in um, 2019 election, the voter turned out 81%. And in last uh, Pilkada uh, 2020, the voter turned out uh, 76 um, You have to can consider that the a pandemic in Indonesia uh, uh, occurred since uh, March uh, 2020. So um, the election, uh, since it's uh, uh, conducted in a holiday, uh, treated uh, by the public as like a momentum to go out from the house uh, and then um, uh, seeing each other. Yeah. So it's like um, recreation day uh, for them to uh, meet each other yeah although we mm -hmm. must follow strict uh, regulation on health protocols some of the but so far uh, miss joyce there's no mm -hmm. like um, complaints from the candidates that they cannot participate and mm -hmm. uh, nominated as candidate because of the pandemics um, the political parties also really wants to have the election uh, in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's no cases about the limitation of the candidates to compete in election. Mm -hmm. All right, one last question on my end before we proceed with the open forum. I would like to go back to Dr. Hanan. Mm -hmm. Sir? Yep. You mentioned earlier about vote buying or money politics. Mm -hmm. Do you have data if there was an increase in vote buying during elections um, under the uh, pandemic or did more people sell their votes? No, mm -hmm. it, it still occur, it is still widespread, mm -hmm. but the level of, uh, it, is, it is not high, in terms of the level, it is not higher than before. It isn't higher mm -hmm. than 2018, or 2017 local elections, or it is not. It is not even higher than Indonesian presidential election 2019. That was the the, the post election survey data that we have. We conducted it uh, between 10 to 14 of December 2020, which is one day after the election. Yes, it was widespread, uh, but uh, it's not to the extent that much much higher than before. Probably because. I don't know. This is just speculation, yeah? Well, during the pandemic, you don't have enough money when uh, mm -hmm. candidates also need to save their money, maybe. <laughs> yeah, And not enough money to be spread out. But I think uh, one of the concerns that also we had before was that, that there will be abuse of uh, the program for pandemic, like a social assistance program, you know? To mm -hmm. uh, to assist the, the poor, the needy in, in in general, and you know that social assistance program was abandoned during this pandemic, and the one who is responsible was responsible for for uh, for distributing it was the incumbent. Yeah, we are still uh, trying to figure out whether or not uh, this social assistance program was uh, part of. The, the reason why a lot of incumbents during this 2020 election was uh, becoming winning, the, the winner of the election. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you very much for that, sir. May we, let, let us now proceed to our open forum. Do we have anyone from our audience who would like to ask a question? Hmm. Let me check the chat box. Okay, so I will be choosing a question from our chat box. So here's one question. Um, perhaps Dr. Ashari can answer this. 
has the government considered an absentee or early voting system so that voters can still vote uh, even without physically gathering at their designated polling station on election day? I believe um, Dr. Ashari mentioned earlier about not extending the voting hours. But sir, can you tell us more about this? Dr. Ashari? Okay. I will answer. Yes. In, uh, our uh, Indonesian regulation on uh, election regulation, we have two kind of uh, regulation. Uh, the election regulation and local uh, election regulation. Based on uh, our election regulation, we, we have uh, only putting um, uh, activities based on our regulation. But it uh, just used in the, uh, what is it? Our voters in the uh, overseas, like in 2019 election, uh, our voters in Philippines, in Malaysia or other countries, they they they, they, uh, they put the lead uh, one week before uh, national uh, uh, putting this. And uh, the methods of only uh, putter, only putting the putters came to the polling station in our embassy or uh, by mail, and uh, the trip. The third method uh, by uh, Dropbox, but the uh, early, put, early putting method not allowed in our uh, local government. Uh, okay. In our two thousand and twenty, there are no 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 what is it uh, in our uh, regulation. The early voting unknown in our uh, local government regulation. So when uh, KPU will make the early voting uh, as a method, we can we cannot operate this uh, early voting method because the uh, regulation uh, unknown. Mm -hmm. So, sir, if I uh, heard it correctly, you could not. Uh, implement the early voting because it's not allowed under your law. Yes. Under your laws, that's correct, sir. Um, I think Miss Yes, Miss Angraini mentioned this earlier. The lack of um, the lack of policies that would have helped the uh, conduct of elections uh, this year, uh, Miss Angraini. Yes, yes, Miss Angraini. Uh, here in the Philippines, one of the, the Commission on Elections said that they are considering holding longer election hours. Initially, they said that they were considering holding elections for two to three days, but now they are saying that there might be security risks there, so they are now considering holding election hours. Um, if you would be asked, uh, would you have considered longer voting hours or more voting days? Um, I prefer to have longer uh, voting hours because mm -hmm. in Indonesia, the voting time are uh, limited from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. So mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, very short. We suggest KPU to extend the voting time, but as mentioned uh, by Dr. Uh, Ashari, that it was uh, impossible for KPU to regulate, uh, exceed the mandate from the law. Because in last election, the law used by KPU, the election law, is a, a election law for normal situation. Mm -hmm. So the government and parliament decided not to change the law. So all the improvement of election services or election provisions on um, uh, election administrations depend on KPU regulation. So in Indonesia, the technical regulation regulated in KPU regulation. So uh, the improvements on health protocols like the masks, the disposable uh, glove and so on and so on, uh, disposal gloves and so on and so on, regulated in KPU regulation, not in the law. So I suggest you to, what is it, to, to adjust your law with the pandemic situation. So you have like more 
flexible time uh, for voters to cast their votes. But if I'm not mistaken in Philippines, the voting time is from morning to afternoon, yeah? so longer mm. than Indonesia. Uh, in Indonesia, the uh, voting time uh, limited from 7 to 1 p.m. And mm. the counting process uh, started after shortly after we finished the voting time. So the voting and counting conducted manually uh, within one day. Mm -hmm. How about Dr. Hanan? I just, I just want to add, I think it yes, also sir. that also depends on what types of elections that you have, how many ballots mm -hmm. that uh, the voters should be uh, should be casted and so on and so forth. I heard that the Philippines will, I, in, in, uh, let's see, in 2020 local elections in Indonesia, it is only, what is it, one, uh, sorry, it, in, in some cases, uh, Maximum the, two ballots. Two ballots, yeah. In in uh, in some cases, the voters should cast uh, two ballots. In most of the cases, in 2020, only one ballot. So I think it is one of also it is one uh, one of the reason also why, uh, although our voting times is very limited during 2020, but it is mm -hmm. still well as as Miss Angraini said, it it runs smoothly at least the voting during the voting day. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I would like to go back to Dr. Ashari. Sir? Okay. Sir, there, um, according to some reports, there was an increase in COVID cases in Indonesia early 2021. Sir, is this related to the conduct of the 2020 elections? Do you think there is correlation there? Um. Sorry, sir, we can't hear you. Uh, repeat once again, please. Um, sir, yes, according to reports, there was an increase in COVID cases in Indonesia uh, early this year. Sir, do you think this is related to the conduct of elections just a month before that, December 2020? I think and I'm sure that uh, not related with uh, uh, our election because you know that uh, like uh, my uh, presentation that we conduct the election day on uh, December uh, 9, 2020 and four days after uh, what is it, the, the incubation period of the COVID virus uh, on uh, December 23rd, yeah, we are we have we have not the uh, report on our uh, uh, voters or our officer in the polling station that uh, uh, what is it uh, spread by the COVID-19 virus. So uh, um, I believe that uh, um, what is it the uh, number of uh, COVID uh, patients in the early 2021 uh, first, not by the, uh, not caused by the uh, election. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we need to wrap up. So one last question for our guest speaker and our reactor, sir. We will be holding our elections next year, but as early as now, we are already planning here in the Philippines. Uh, we are already preparing for our campaign period and our election period. What advice, sir, can you give us um, as we prepare for this big event in our democracy, sir? I think um, it based on uh, national separation or local separation. You cannot uh, compare between uh, Indonesia, Singapore, US, and Philippines. But I think the uh, Philippines governor uh, government or uh, Philippines uh, uh, election management body or the Philippines people know uh, well now how to do uh, it to have the election for this year or the next year uh, in Philippines. But uh, uh, knowledge sharing with uh, uh, another country like Indonesia, uh, Singapore, or uh, US election. I think is uh, important for the uh, Philippines. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, sir. Um, to Dr. Hanan and Ms. Sangraini. Dr. Hanan first.
Sir, um, what is your biggest uh, lesson or takeaway from this experience? Perhaps the best lesson that we, we, we in the Philippines can also learn from, sir? Well, if you really uh, focusing on all of your effort to make sure that uh, the, uh, the, the health protocol is strictly observed, that will that will still save uh, uh, election in terms of democracy, like participation and so on and so forth. So I, I think make sure that you follow the health protocol, but also make sure that the public understand that doing that health protocol is for them to, to feel safe to come to the uh, to come to the, uh, the polling station. So you have to save democracy and also uh, make sure that the safety of the public is also observed. Do you think the government, sir, made the right decision to push through with the elections during this pandemic? If they make every effort, if the government made mm -hmm. every effort, to make sure that the election is safe uh, in terms of the COVID protocol, mm -hmm. I think uh, they can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, sir. And lastly, Ms. Sangraini. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Ms. Joyce. Mm -hmm. I think the success of election also depends on the success in handling COVID-19. Mm -hmm. If government uh, really... Uh, apa, can handle the COVID, uh, I'm sure that they also can handle the election uh, smoothly. But also uh, what the uh, uh, EMBs need is a robust election law. So the government and parliament must provide them with a good and clear uh, election law as a basis uh, to conduct uh, uh, election and also budget support. If you want the election run smoothly, it's impossible if you uh, reduce or decrease the budget uh, of the election uh, management bodies. I think that's one of my suggestions to uh, Philippine uh, elections. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Again, thank you very much to Dr. Ashari, Dr. Hanan, and to Ms. Angraini. And that ends our discussion with our guest speakers. If you have further questions, you may send in your questions via email at participate. Uh, ASOG at Ateneo.edu. Now to wrap up our event, may we call on the Secretary General of the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections or NAMPREL, uh, Mr. Eric Alvia, to give his closing remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Asyari and uh, Dr. Anan and uh, Ms. Uh, Agriani for a very insightful discussion on uh, the local elections in Indonesia. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, uh, KPU for pulling off a very successful elections, no? despite all of the concerns uh, with regards to running a, an elections during a pandemic condition. Uh, likewise, I'd also like to thank the civil society groups and also researchers no, in Indonesia for making sure that this happens. No. As we all know, no, and as we've seen from the discussions, that uh, a whole community approach is very important to make sure that we have to balance uh, upholding the rights of every citizen to exercise his right to suffrage but yet, we do not have to sacrifice the health and safety of each individual. I think Indonesia was able to show uh, the world and the region that it is possible, even despite all of the concerns and, of course, frayed nerves no, in the preparation. Uh, there is no magic bullet to the preparations for the elections. Uh, Practical solutions are there. I think diligence, prudence, and hard work and foresight is very important and a key factor in making sure that the 
elections no last December was run properly. Again, uh, let me congratulate the Indonesian people for uh, pulling it off and making su uh, successful elections. And uh, we also wish uh, that uh, we would learn from our fellow neighbors, our fellow Indonesians. We have one and a half years left and what you showed earlier in the discussion was like a prescription, was like a checklist on what to do and what not to do. No? As we prepare also for our own uh, national and local elections. Thank you very much and good day. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Alvia. And I agree it was like seeing, uh, seeing the future because we can really relate to their experience. And uh, thanks again, Mr. Alvia, and to all our speakers here You're today. Welcome. So um, uh, may we invite all our speakers for a quick photo opportunity before we end today's session. I think we are going to do that virtually. Yes. Okay, okay at the count of three. Um. Okay. I may request everyone to turn on their camera so you can join the photo opportunity. Okay, are we, are we ready? Yeah. All right. At the count of three, guys. Ready, one, two, three. One more. Hold on. All right, one more. One, two, three. Okay. One more, sorry. Hold on. All right. One more, ready, guys. Uh, one, two, three. Thank you. All right. So that wraps up the uh, first session of Halalan 2.0, holding free, fair, and safe elections in the new normal. Again, we would like to congratulate um, our guests and thank you for joining us today. And uh, we invite everyone to attend our next uh, webinar tackling elections under COVID-19, this time the United States experience. That will be next Wednesday, February 17, 2021 at 10 in the morning. Now this will feature guest speakers, Commissioner Thomas Hicks of the, of the, uh, the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, Dr. Barry Burden of the Elections Research Center, and Dr. Daniel Price, or Chris of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Now, for those who are interested to join our discussions next year or our webinar next week, you may proceed to the uh, links um, we are showing right now on your screen. And uh, tell us what you think about today's webinar and what you hope to learn in our succeeding sessions by leaving a comment on our Facebook live stream or by tweeting about the event using the hashtags uh, hashtag Let's Vote In and hashtag COVID Free Halalan Webinar Series. Again, joy, uh, that is hashtag Let's Vote In. You can see that on your screen and hashtag COVID Free Halalan Webinar Series. And for more updates, you may visit the Ateneo School of Government and Project Participates social media pages. So we are showing them now on your screens. Um, go ahead, go to those pages and like, follow, share uh, our pages. So again, thank you everyone. It was, uh, it was nice meeting our, uh, our guest speakers and it was a nice learning experience for many of us. Have a great day and take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joyce. Thank, Thank you, you Sandra. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care, ma'am. Terima kasih. Yeah. Terima Thank kasih. you. Terima kasih, Terima kasih. Mr. Aitan. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Sherry and Dr. Hanan. Okay. Thank you also to our guests, to our um, audience.